Welcome back. Uh, today's experiment is experiment three, preparation and properties of oxygen. So as always with these whiteboard videos, you, if, I, if you feel like I'm going too fast, you can hit the pause button. All right, but I'm going to go through this, explain uh, the lab. There is the background information that I've provided for you. You should definitely read through that. In addition, there are several videos of many of the activities for this experiment, so you'll be able to use that for your data workup, and I will also be providing you data. All right, so oxygen, okay, is O2. So oxygen is a diatomic molecule. Whoops, E-N. Okay, so oxygen doesn't exist as O. It exists as O2. So it's a diatomic two atoms molecule. Uh, and oxygen is actually extremely reactive. So, you know, we have to breathe oxygen. That's because our bodies need it because of a lot of the reactions it does. Some of the properties, it's a strong oxidizer. <coughs> oxidizer means it removes electrons from things. If you look at your periodic table, you've gone through that in the lecture. Oxygen is in the upper right hand corner. So it has a very strong attraction for electrons. So that's not, not surprising that it removes electrons. Uh, one of the most important things is it supports combustion. And you heard my dogs barking in the background. That will happen again during these videos. Okay, and combustion literally means to a chemist the word combustion. So oxygen doesn't itself burn. It helps other things burn. Okay, uh, combustion means uh, is the same as burning. And it means to a chemist it means combines with oxygen. So oxygen, that's it's what's major property. Anything that burns uh, needs oxygen. If you've looked at the fire triangle, um, for to have a fire, you need three things: you need fuel, you need heat, and you need oxygen. So even a fire extinguisher, if it prevents oxygen from getting to the fuel, the fire will go out. Now, uh, oxygen is naturally found in air, and air, as you'll find out, I don't know where we are in the lecture right now. Air is about twenty percent or so oxygen. It's mostly nitrogen, right? So that means things burn in air. If things were to burn in pure oxygen, you'd expect them to burn better. All right, so that's a lot of the properties of this. Now, also in combustion reactions, so a combustion reaction is going to be like this. It's going to be whatever the other element is, X plus oxygen. And then it's going to combine, and how it combines is going to depend on what X is. So it can combine in any number of ways. So we're just going to say X, uh, Y, O, Z. So for example, you might have a, a big one is carbon. Carbon combines with oxygen. So give you carbon dioxide. It can combine in different ratios though. Carbon can combine with oxygen to give you carbon monoxide. Um, things like aluminum can combine with oxygen. That will give us Al2O3. Why does it go in that ratio? These are things we'll cover as the, as the course progresses, but you can see every time something plus oxygen gives you that. Uh, one more that's interesting that we'll explore later in this class, not in this particular lab. Um, let me clear this off, and then I'll go through the experiment itself. All right, um, is anytime you have a hydrocarbon, so hydrocarbons, which are you know, gasoline, for example, are C, X, H, Y. And when they burn, they're going to do this. Um, they're going to combine with oxygen. And they'll give you CO2. And so there's your combination. But you also get water from the combination of the oxygen with the hydrogen. So, and see, this is not an element. And just for an example, if you have something like propane, propane is C, 3, H, 8. You'll get CO2 and H2O. And you know, to balance this, we put a 3 here and a 4 here and a 5 here. And we've, you'll go through balancing equations. So these are just some examples of things combining with oxygen. Now, in the lab, the first activity is how are we going to get oxygen? We're gonna, I'm not going to try to draw the, well, I'll, I'll draw the picture a little bit. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to generate oxygen gas. We're going to take hydrogen peroxide. 
And you can actually do this at home. Um, a red potato, uh, potatoes contain uh, an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide by itself will break down into water and oxygen gas. All right, and uh, we can balance this. Let's see, put a two here and a two here. All right, yeah. All right, it'll do it by itself, but it's very slow. So what we do is we add, uh, in this case, MnO2, manganese 4 oxide, that's an M. Uh, that's called a catalyst. And potatoes uh, have an enzyme that will do the same thing. If you put hydrogen peroxide on a cut, it foams up and the foaming is oxygen. A catalyst is something that is that is involved, in, that speeds up a reaction. But it's not consumed. So we typically write it under the arrow. So we did, we're not going to do this in this experiment, but if we weighed the MnO2 before we did this reaction, and then at the end of the reaction we took the MnO2 out and we weighed it again, it would have the same mass. Uh, an enzyme is a biological catalyst. All right. So anyway, um, we're going to do this reaction, and then we're going to cap we're going to capture the water, the oxygen, excuse me, using a method called downward displacement. Of water, and what the basic idea is, I'm going to draw this on another uh, another sheet. Is if you're going to try to capture oxygen in a container, that container is full of air. So how do you know when the oxygen's there? Because the oxygen and air look exactly the same. So what you do is you're going to have we have a container of water, and we'll flip it over. So this is just a bottle. Good drawing, huh? And it's full of water, and then we're going to have a a flask like this. And it's going to have a cap, and then it's going to have a tube coming out, and the tube will go here, and this will be the reaction, and the oxygen that's being produced will go through this tube, and it'll bubble. And as it pushes all the water out, this will get filled with oxygen. All right. So that's basically the idea. And one of the videos I made is a little more more de detailed, and actually shows shows you shows me doing it. And then the rest of the experiment, all the other activities are just testing for oxygen. So activity one and two are the generation of oxygen. Activity three is, um, it's called combustion of wood. I'm just going to number the activity. I'm going to call them the act from now on. Activity three is actually a splint test. So remember back in experiment two, we did a splint test for carbon dioxide and the splint went out. We did a splint test for hydrogen. That was a burning splint, and that popped when there was hydrogen present. What this is, we use a glowing splint. So you take a piece of wood, and you light it on fire, then you blow it out so it's like an ember, and you stick it in oxygen, and it should reignite. So in oxygen, it reignites, and you'll see that in the video. That's a test for oxygen. Because if you think about it, since air is 20% oxygen, if something is pure oxygen, it should burn five times better. Right? Activity four, we're going to take a candle. We're going to time a candle flame. And we're going to take a bottle of air and put it over a candle and time how long it takes for the candle to go out. Then we're going to take a bottle of pure oxygen and time how long it takes the candle to go out with pure oxygen. Right? Activity five is burning sulfur. And we're just going to burn some sulfur, and you'll see how it burns in air and how it burns in oxygen. Activity six is same thing, but we're going to burn iron. Okay, and the sulfur is going to do this. It's going to, and you can balance the equations later. Uh, this one, the wood, carbon plus oxygen goes to CO2. The iron, iron's hard to predict, but I'm going to tell you, iron plus oxygen is going to give us this compound. This is rust. All right, so that's activities four, five, and six. And then activity seven, let me just do this, the last part. Activity seven, we're going to look at the density of air, of oxygen. So if you recall from experiment one, 
Okay, uh, something will float if it's less dense and it will sink if it's more dense. So what we're going to do in this case is I'm going to have a bottle here, and that's air. Now I invert a bottle of oxygen like this. And we'll have a glass plate that I'll pull out, and this will be oxygen. Now, if oxygen is less dense than air, the oxygen will float on the air, and this bottle will never get any oxygen in it. If oxygen is denser than air, the oxygen will sink into the air, and this will mix. And then we're going to just repeat the candle test. And you can hypothesize. I'm not going to tell you, but you'll see the data. Uh, we know how long it took for the. We will know how long it took for the candle to go out in air, and we'll know that from activity four. We know how long it would take for the candle to go out in pure oxygen. So you can say if the air oxygen mixes with air, what you would expect. Right? So those are the activities for the experiment. That's the experiment that you're going to do, or that I'm going to do and you're going to see. And so that's pretty much the whole thing. And I'm going to stop here and let you go through everything. Have a good time.